Yo, what's up everybody? Robot Vice here. Today, um, I'm going to be doing a commentary over a Battle Cup Grand Final game that we played. Um, this was my team here. I was playing with Bleak, World Rage, uh, Symmetrical, and some Divine 7 guy. And in the Grand Finals, we met against Moon Meander, Rioya, Godzi, Gunner, and BSJ. And I know the score looks like it was kind of a stomp. But I want to show you exactly what happened. The game was much closer than what it looks like. So the kills don't mean everything. And that's you'll kind of see that as the game progresses. So I'm going to skip past the, the drafting phase. What? And we're just going to be watching my player perspective. So I'm playing Earth Spirit here. Um, before this game gets started, I want to let you guys know that uh, we have made uh, the sub goal of 100 subscribers on Twitch. Therefore, there is going to be a released on Sunday this weekend. There is going to be a full comprehensive techies guide for 721d or whatever patch it is um, and a completely up-to-date guide talking about laning talking about what to do at certain times in the game talking about mine positioning stacking mines everything so look for that on sunday additionally if you go back and look at my channel and search on my channel for national geographic techies you're gonna see a video i made right with a, a very old video but it's really cringy and kind of goofy. Uh, check it out. And uh, I'm going to be making an episode two that I'm hoping to release next week. So look for that. And without further ado, you guys uh, enjoy the commentary. Um, this is Battle Cup Grand Final. I'm playing Earth Spirit here. We've decided to uh, start as an aggro tri lane. Um, and just send them Morphling bottom at the moment. And um, I, uh, the reason we're sending Oracle top is because Oracle is great against Juggernaut in lane due to him having this Fate's Edict spell. So whenever Juggernaut and Grimstroke try to set up a kill on the Brewmaster or the Oracle, he just puts Fate's Edict on. And none of that Juggernaut spin damage will happen because it makes him immune to magic. So that's pretty nice, and so now I'm kind of just left to my own devices to roam. I put down a ward to block the small camp to ensure that they can't get these small pulls off. And I'm kind of just sitting up here. I, I didn't get a lot accomplished, I don't think, in this first uh, minute or two. But it got some good harass on these guys, so. And I, we maybe could have dove there, I just decided not to. So we force out a salve from him. And I decided to just pull the wave back. Also, my cat is uh, around, so you might hear me talking to him a little bit during the commentary. So right now, I'm holding the wave. Uh, therefore, we can try to get better lane equilibrium. So it costs me a little bit of health, but it's worth it for us to, so we don't push and go right under their tower or near their tower. By doing this, this gives us lane equilibrium, the benefit of that. And since we blocked the small camp and uh, we just unblocked that dire camp, that means uh, that there's going to be no pulling going on, which is nice. So now uh, we don't really have kill threat on this juggernaut. He can always just spin away. So I... We really probably should have done a better job zoning him as two. But Grimstroke just unblocked the small camp. And now this is kind of where I make the decision that uh, maybe I can make a play happen. I check out mid. You can see me glance over towards mid. And I'm probably asking, like, hey, can we set up a kill here? 
And this is where you look for the opportunity when the creeps of the enemy are pushing towards your tower so that the enemy is going to be pushing up. And that's what gives you the opportunity to make a kill happen. Because if your ally creeps are just pushed towards the enemy tower, then there's really no point of you going mid because it's not like you're going to be able to jump the storm spirit without being in vision. But if you wait for the right opportunity and you tell your mid laner, this is where I tell him, hey, just deny the wave. Deny the wave. Don't uh, force him. Don't make him suspicious. And you can see here. You die. Yet your failure. Now is he's getting pressured a little bit. It's a good bait. And this is where I roll in. And we find first blood. And. I don't mind taking it. Um, I think one of my the best decisions I made in this game was to get a bottle. And you'll see I'll go get a bottle right now. And since Monkey King is not going to get a bottle and Storm Spirit is really a, like very heavily relies on runes, me getting a bottle here just completely owned this game. And you're going to see why. My Morphling low on health. He can always morph down to low Agi, and I can bottle him to full. So I'm scouting out this rune here, and I end up finding a regeneration. Okay, and I, I could have gone down and bottled him and then ran back to the rune, but I didn't want to risk Storm Spirit getting the regen, so I went for it right away. Now here, I'm going to go straight to pull because I know that uh, our Morphling is struggling right now. The Omni Knight is completely owning the lane, as he should, you know. So I'm going to pull this wave. And I'm just going to mess with this Omni Knight right now to ensure my Morphling can farm. I'm going to pop the regen rune and start bottling my Morphling. And this is really important. And this may have been a game-winning play made by me for this lane, because this lane was looking really rough. So Omni Knight ends up picking up this bounty rune, which is unfortunate. But uh, we end up killing him here, and I end up getting the next bounty rune. So I end up getting another full bottle. I've got plenty of... Uh, I got two mangoes, so I can use this bottle on my teammates. And you can kind of, you're starting to see why this was such a good purchase. So here are Morphling's baiting. And now I come in. And since Omni Knight already used his uh, heal, we find a kill on the Omni Knight. The one hero in the game that was winning his lane, we're now turning the game, or turning the lane back in our favor. I just bottled up my Morphling some more, and then I have Monkey, you see Monkey King running immediately top for the top rune, and I go for the bottom rune. And you can see Storm now going to check the bottom rune, but he'll realize, or maybe he's probably not. He's probably going to Shrine or something because he knows Monkey King has an Arcane. That's my fault. But now we have a 2k gold lead at 6 minutes, and this Omni Knight is no longer very happy with his lane. Our Morphling's all caught up. I just walk up here because I know Storm's in the area. I might be able to get lucky and find him on low HP or something. And I go check him out, and he's still level 5 here. Uh, just getting some vision and getting some information for the team. So I'm letting my team know now that Storm is probably right about to reach level 6 and might try to make an attempt to get a kill somewhere. We see Grimstroke mid behind the Storm Spirit now. So now our Brewmaster's free farming, our Morphling's free farming, and our Monkey King's free farming. Like, um, it's going really well. They do have a jungle enigma who uh, was pooling the Omni Knight regen, or the ring of regens. You know, you've seen the new meta with that. So I'm kind of waiting here to see what uh, the Omni Knight's trying to do and see if I want to set up for a kill. 
Now I roll in. Got vision of him. And... I don't know if we find a kill here or not. Okay, we end up not finding a kill on the Omni Knight. But we do end up turning it around and getting the Grimstroke kill. While sending the Omni Knight back to the shrine. Which is good for us, so... Obviously, the game's going really well. I'm finding the impact that I needed to have, which is really great. So now the Omni Knight's chasing down my Morphling again. I end up missing the roll this time. But... Radiant are scanning. Um, yeah, I don't know, but something, but... Anyways, going well. Uh, one big problem is this this Enigma is very farmed. And now you see, um, kind of just floating down here. I just want to make sure that uh, Morphling doesn't get ganked. If Storm comes or Enigma comes, I have my Silence available. I didn't, I ended up getting an early point in Silence this game. And so I'm just going to keep pulling. And just allow my Morphling to uh, continue farming. And right now, I'm kind of just saving for Urn. Um, I didn't end up going a Magic Stick this game um, at the beginning. Uh, just because I have the bottle. Um, that kind of suffices for the regen that I need. And now we have two down here. We just saw one other hero down here, so I missed the roll. Uh, he ends up getting the heal off, and yeah, now I'm out of mana. But the bounty runes are coming up in 15 seconds. And I'm moving up here to try to get control and get this bounty rune. But we see... Their heroes are all kind of rotating down to this area. Um, I end up getting the bounty rune here, which is great. So I end up going down, but we get four bounty runes, which is really nice. And now they're diving our Monkey King. I believe, yeah, he ends up going down as well. So not the best, but really not too bad since we were able to get um, both bounty runes. And now I'm going to port up top since there's a catapult up here pushing on our tower. I don't want this juggernaut. To, um, or wait. Never mind. They don't have a catapult. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Yeah. So I want to just get this wave off of the tower as soon as possible. That way um, this allows me to get a little bit of farm towards my Urn of Shadows. And also keeps the juggernaut from getting uh, free damage on the tower. I missed some CS there. Don't judge me. But this also kind of costs me because I cannot teleport to the bottom lane, uh, which is not good. You never, as a support, you never really want to TP to a lane to farm. And I know that um, from playing competitive, I understand that concept. But in this scenario, I didn't think it was awful um, because I was able to get the kind of the farm that I needed. You know, I didn't have like any CS the entire game. So I was able to farm up my Urn of Shadows. And my TP, I'm letting my team know that my TP's up in 12 seconds. And that we can fight bottom as soon as I'm up. I'm very strong right now. This is kind of one of Earth Spirit's peak timings is this level 6. Um... The earlier you get your level 6, the better it is in proportion to the game time. Uh, due to Magnetize's damage, I mean, the, the less HP heroes have, obviously, the more damage that Magnetize does. And it's a really strong spell if you get it right at level 6. So here, I scout out a regen rune. And just imagine if Storm Spirit gets this regen rune. Instead, I'm able to bottle it. And this just makes my, like, this, I'm telling you, this bottle purchase was gigantic. So here, I end up just silencing and throwing a stone out. We get a big magnetize. We take out the enigma, but we decide not to pursue further. We just want to get this tower. 
We get the Do Helmadom creep. Somehow we all scatter here. Uh, we decide, I guess, not to push this tower. Still have Bruce split too. We probably should have pushed this tower. So if anybody wants to know the items of the other heroes, Brew is Faze Boots. He's going towards uh, Drums and Vlad's. Oracle has Arcane Boots. Monkey King has uh, is going Echo Saber, Diffusal. And Morphling, uh, I think he goes like Yasha Scotty or something. So I'm kind of just sitting here with my Morphling. Um, I just want to make sure that he doesn't die. So... I don't really think it's uh, really that. i just here to ensure that Morphling gets this tower, and he does. So I'm not sure if we can kill this Juggernaut because I don't really have the jump because he did see me just walk over to the trees due to it being daytime. And this is kind of the support life. Just staying with my Morphling. And Monkey King gets an invis rune, so he's like, I kind of want to fight middle. So... I poured in. He gets the silence. I get the stun into the magnetize. We get the purge. I lay another. Uh, we end up. So I get the kill on the storm spirit. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. I'm trying to explain everything. I hope you guys are getting something out of it at least. Uh, bounty runes are coming up in 30 seconds. And since we have the bottom lane pushed in, and we have. Uh, kind of control of the map right now I'm like all right let's push this and try to get as many bounties as we can and at the higher levels and in competitive these bounty runes are really important um, this is what allows your uh, supports to scale and all of your heroes to just do well which is really nice um, so we end up getting four bounties I believe so that just makes our lead go from 2k, 3k to 5k. And you can just see how valuable these bounty runes are. If you're uh, like at a lower level, just try to get your team on board to prioritize these bounty runes. Um, they're uh, incredibly important, and that's an understatement, honestly. You can see the net worths now. You can see how how much we've pulled ahead uh, over time. What is going on? Where is my mouse? Radiance middle tower is under attack. All right, my mouse is bugged out. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. Try to get it fixed real fast. All right, I got it. I just lost it on my other screen. But anyways... Uh, fight goes, breaks down bottom. Um, Enigma's kind of zoning me here. He was able to pick off our Brewmaster and Oracle. Oracle buys back. And I see an opportunity here. I get a stun and a silence onto the Storm Spirit. And we end up turning it. They have no spells now. So, works out well for us. I don't have any stones here, so it's a pretty tough kill. Uh, Omni Knight ends up uh, juking away here and gets away but uh really not a bad fight for them at all uh, they end up getting two or three basically because the oracle died back and uh the brewmaster went down 
So now we're just grouping up, uh, trying to get damage onto the mid tower. The Morphling gets away. I'm sitting here and I'm just like, sometimes your cores are just out of position and there's nothing you can really do to save them. So you gotta remember one big thing in competitive is you need to learn to cut your losses and never have that save a buddy syndrome. Um, it can cost teams games and that's how you throw games. I scout out another regen rune bottom, so I'm ready to just go get it immediately. I, you can see, once again, how this bottle is paid off, uh, keeping the runes away from the Storm Spirit. And that's one thing I think Competitive has taught me, is rune control is just... It's so important, okay? These these power runes at the in the two-minute increments are game changing you know a double damage a haste an arcane rune a regen they can really decide a game in some cases so you can see our lead has slipped away from you know five six k back down to two k now which is unfortunate um i'm pretty farmed for an earth spirit at this time uh, this hero does not farm very well if you're not level like until level 15 if you do decide to take that talent so the thing is is like for a while there when the talents got changed uh, I'm gonna talk to you about these talent choices is people were immediately thinking the 40 damage 150 rolling boulder damage were the best options in all cases a monkey king makes a pretty pog play here and uh, gets away which is nice but uh you can see now that pros are even are a lot of people are choosing the plus 10 intelligence over the 40 damage now um i can understand if you're playing a core or spirit so i'm telling my team i'm coming in we take out the storm spirit due to my silence um he dodges my my uh boulder smash but i've even seen some pros uh, have been taking the plus seven armor in some games over the 150 rolling boulder damage since they did nerf that. Um, I believe it was plus 200 rolling boulder damage and they brought it down to plus 150. So, yeah. So, it's something to think about. Um, so, some games I actually do take the plus seven armor. I think in this game I definitely take the 150 rolling boulder damage. And I actually took the plus 40 damage, which surprised me. And I think the only reason I did this is because I was able to get a Yule Scepter so quickly this game that I basically have that 10 intelligence in that Yule Scepter. So I, I didn't really, I felt the 40 damage could uh, give me that extra little burst that I needed to take out maybe a Storm Spirit or something. Or maybe to kill a spinning Juggernaut. So we get the magnetized down here. Uh, I end up, uh, this is my last stone here. It was a nice stun by Gunner. He has the black hole. He was getting ready to black hole there, but I yulesed him up in the air immediately. And that's what kind of stopped them from turning the fight there. And Yule Scepter on this hero, you know, it used to be, you know, you just rush Blink Dagger on this hero. But since they changed the stun to be in the rolling boulder and the boulder smash to be the slow, Blink Dagger really isn't necessary. See here, we scout out Storm Spirit with the ward we have, so I immediately jump him. I don't I don't mess around. I just yules him up in the air, and then I follow up with the silence. And this is really important to note, is that this is the power of the Yule Scepter on uh, Earth Spirit is it ought to, for here it's so easy to catch heroes out and the silence is so instant that heroes can't really do much so i can just roll in here and get a yules off and it's basically guaranteed it, it gives us more time to gap close on the hero and i just want like that's kind of the heroes changed a lot and i'm trying to explain it i know i'm not the best at this but i'm trying my best So a lot of uh, the pros and pe a lot of Earth Spirit players right now 
see the Yules again here. A lot of them are kind of just going for this uh, Yule Scepter Spirit Vessel as the two core items. And then from there, you can kind of build whatever you want, whatever you think your team needs. You know, whether your team doesn't have a Vlad's carrier, you can get a Vlad's, you can get a Veil, you can get an Atos, you can get a Sheep, you can get a Nullifier, you can get a Lotus Orb, you can get Guardian Greaves. You know, you can do anything once you have uh, these two core items. In this game, I think Spirit Vessel is really valuable against the Juggernaut Healing Ward and against the Omni Knight. So that's what I'm prioritizing next. I felt the Yule Scepter uh, was necessary to get before the Spirit Vessel due to the silences that they have. Storm Spirit doesn't end up going Orchid, but most Storm Spirits commonly do go for Orchid. This uh, Storm Spirit is kind of going a goofy build this game, and you'll see what I'm talking about uh, when I show you at the end of the game. So we have the Aegis now, and we're just trying to uh, get some tower damage here, maybe take out the tier 3 tower. We're not going to commit very hard. Um, Bleak ends up going in and blows up the Grimstroke. That was close. But um, Grimstroke buys back here, and this is where we decide, okay, they have our lanes pushed out. Uh, I'm going to show you. Their Storm Spirit and their Juggernaut push out our lanes quite a bit. Um, they're thinking about going back in here. Morphling starts hitting down on the racks. And this is where he just decides that, okay, we force them all back to base except the Storm Spirit right now. Um, let's just get back. We can take Shrines and we can get our lanes pushed out. You can see Juggernaut and Storm are pushing out our lanes here. So I end up trying to catch the Storm Spirit here, but he makes a nice play and zips away. And that's because they have this deep ward here that was able to scout me out. Um, I think I would have got him. It actually just expired immediately after that. But So bottle up a haste rune. Bounty runes are in 30 seconds. Uh, we end up taking a smoke because they came out to contest us taking the shrine. So I roll in here, we scout out the Enigma and the Grimstroke. He gets a nice double stun. I get a good silence into Smash. I Yules up the Enigma as he's walking away, and then I get the stun off immediately. And the thing is, you don't have to wait for this Enigma to black hole and then cancel. With all the disable that you have when you have this Yule Scepter on this hero, you can just, you can use many things to stop him before he even thinks about black holing if you know what i mean like some in some certain uh, circumstances that that's just how it works so we take out the bottom shrine we end up getting three bounty runes and yeah things are going well so we got our lead back it's 21 to 6 but Honestly, with their heroes in this game and with this Enigma as farmed as he is, and once he has BKB, this could be anybody's game because we don't have a way of canceling a black hole with BKB. So we're trying to group up and take this tier two tower. Uh, Bleak gets plus 200 there from that Dom creep. I think Gunner. Uh, Gunner, I don't think played this game. Uh, very well uh, just being honest I'm sure he would say the same thing if he saw it he farmed really well and did his job in the early game but it, it wasn't an easy enigma game you know they their draft consisted of they opened up we opened up with the first pick Oracle and they countered with an Omni Knight enigma so we just second picked Earth Spirit for me and it's definitely not an easy game for an enigma here so we still have the Aegis right now, and we are, we're trying to think about pushing here. Uh, we see Storm Spirit bottom, and we see Omni Knight top. We jump in, we get the Grim Stroke with the Morphling's new Ethereal Blade, and this is where we just start pushing because we know that he bought back last fight, so we know that he doesn't have buyback. So we know we're at an advantage here, but if you look at the other lanes, Radiant bottoms pushed in, mids pushed in, and tops pushed in. 
So now we don't have a creep wave. We do end up getting the mid melee barracks. Um, I get the magnetized down here. We take out the Enigma. He does have buyback. I silence up the Omni Knight. We take him out. And we force out two more buybacks, which is really nice. And Morphling does no longer has the Aegis, so we're just trying to get out of here. Uh, we end up leaving the Brewmaster again. You remember what I said about cutting ties? Um, they did have vision here, but I end up rolling up to the high ground, TPing out, and we end up getting away with only one death, forcing two buybacks, taking a set of barracks. So definitely worth, you know, very important to know. I was thinking, I considered here for a moment not going Spirit Vessel and actually just going for an Atos next, but then I realized there was really no point in this game, so I switched back to the Spirit Vessel. I had a moment where I considered it, but... Um, I didn't stream this Battle Cup. Um, I just decided not to. I don't know. wasn't feeling it that day. Now, we catch them mid. Oh, I want to talk to you about this. I want to talk to you about this. So, in this moment here, as you see, I'm going to show you exactly what happened here. Okay? They made a nice play. They decided to take a smoke, or maybe not even a smoke, but they run straight at us here, okay? This was a really nice play by them. As soon as you see this Grimstroke in this position right here, you should immediately know that they are in this area, okay? A position 5 hero pushed up past, their, uh, past one of our super creep creep waves is a huge indication that they are right behind him or in, in the area, okay? So I believe Bleak made a pretty big mistake here by walking up this high ground with no vision or no idea of what's happening, especially when we have vision of this Grimstroke sitting right here in the mid lane. And this almost allowed them to get back into the game. He walks up to the high ground here, he gets black hold, and I run in, I silence, but it's too late. So we end up feeding two kills away, which is really bad. So I just want you guys to understand that, like when you see things on the map, you should read, you should be able to understand where other heroes are in relation to the hero that you have visions of, vision of position. So now they're knocking on our high ground. But luckily we have our Glyph up and we're able to defend semi well. They end up taking out our Shrine, or our Tier 3 Tower. We know they don't have Black Holes, so we're not really afraid of them. Um, I end up respawning here and... Yeah. End up picking up a Smoke and they're going to start working on our Shrines. So, like I said, it's 25 to 9. You know, you'd think it'd be like a 20k gold bleed but it's only a 5k gold lead right now. And that's what I was saying. The score uh, doesn't really indicate the actual state of the game. So I get my spirit vessel up. The second Roshan should be up, or should be it should be up right now, I believe. Or no, it respawns in one second. Yeah, so basically up. So it respawns now. Bounty runes come up. We end up getting R2 on this side. And we just want to force Roche right now because we know that they don't have Black Hole for 70 more seconds. Has fallen. But, uh, okay, Roshan respawns in a minute and 30. So we end up getting kind of unlucky. Uh, I wouldn't say really unlucky. It's kind of predicted. It's not the longest respawn timer, but it's pretty long. So... We end up just waiting. I'm sitting in the pit, just trying to get vision, hope, praying that Roshan spawns, like, now. But you can see our lead slowly dwindling away as our lanes push in. The good news is our Morphling's huge. So right now, we're just waiting for Roche. Uh, it kind of becomes a little bit of a stalemate. 
as we wait in the Roche pit. I'm just going to fast forward so we don't have to sit here and watch this, but... Okay, we end up smoking. We want to try to get a pick off because we know that they now have black hole. So we want to try to get a pick off before we do Roche. We do scout out the Grimstroke here. So we end up just taking him out. And Roshan is up now. My team saves me the Invis rune. And we start working on Roche. Unfortunately, the Enigma has just picked up his Black King bar, okay? And we don't know this at this point, okay? So this is where things could get really ugly. It's a 1k gold lead. It's the second Roshan, and Enigma has his Black King bar. So I'm sitting here in Viz, um, and Enigma's ready to jump with Black Hole and BKB. Roche is almost dead. They black hole here, but the Enigma didn't use his BKB. So me, I immediately cancel the black hole, and he BKBs after, okay? This is certainly what lost them the game. Um, I get a good magnetize, and we just start rolling them over. So you can see, if he got that BKB off, this would be an entirely different game right now. So he choked pretty hard. Uh, we get the Storm Spirit up in the air. Uh, I'm not sure if they kill him or not. No, they don't. So, yeah, you can see, you know, just one button. One miscalculation. I end up tipping gun arrows. I felt kind of bad because I, I, he's the kind of person that, like, when he makes mistakes, he really dwells on them. But... This game's not over yet, because they have a Storm Spirit. So, as we're trying to push in mid, he takes out our entire creep wave. And we don't have Glyph available yet. So, we have to get our lanes out. We can't push, even though we have no Enigma, no Black Hole, no Omni Knight, no Jug. We can't end the game or anything. There's another pause. Okay, reconnects. <laughs> Heal up my Morphling. Uh, we're just trying to keep the lanes out now. We want to get all of our lanes out. And pushing waves and clearing creeps is another thing that I think low rank players don't do enough. You have no idea the value of pushing out one creep wave, okay? When you push out a wave, it gives you money, obviously. But it uh, the most important thing is it gives you information, okay? Because someone has to come clear that creep wave. And if they don't, it's going to push further into their base. And every single, every single unit that moves, or I mean like unit as in a distance measurement that it moves towards their base, that's more information that that grants you. So they end up getting a good uh, false promise down. Um, I roll in here. Um, I'm trying to catch the Storm Spirit. And I'm like, guys, guys, right here. I end up catching him. I get the Yules. I'm like, guys, I got Storm Spirit. I call it out. Silence to a stun, into a roll. I magnetize just to make sure. And we take out the Storm Spirit. So 70 seconds. We don't have to deal with this really annoying hero that pushes down our, uh, clears our creep waves. And this is our time to go. That was the pick that we needed. I wish our carries came here and hit these catapults. So we have our Brewmaster back, but that's because he has Boots of Travel. And he's just keeping the Juggernaut from getting our racks. And our Morphling still has the Aegis right now. 
And we're just going to push. We have 20 seconds until Storm Spirit's up. Oracle cancels my Spirit Vessel there. I was pretty upset about that. They end up jumping in. I'm just trying to chill back. Um, Enigma gets his black hole off. It's whatever. Uh, they end up almost killing the Monkey King, but the Oracle gets the False Promise out. So great for him. Um, I Spirit Vessel my Monkey King, hoping to keep him alive. And he ends up surviving. I catch the Storm Spirit again, but I choke. I choked right here and missed my silence by 0.5 seconds. But... It doesn't matter. Uh, he ends up dying, I believe. Maybe not. So, I choked right there. I even said it in the chat as we were playing. I said, guys, I choked. I'm sorry. As soon as I messed up that silence. But a huge boundless strike into silence and smash. We take out a bunch of them. Storm Spirit zipping around. I get a Yules off into a roll. And we take him out. Then they call GG. And we win the game. So, I think the reason I'm showing you guys this gameplay is one, it was kind of an upset. We definitely had the lower ranked players. And. Yeah, we definitely had the lower ranked players. It was an upset. And I thought I played really well, except for that last little flub there on the storm. But, yeah. Um, they ended up, the draft order went, uh, they ended up. Uh, picking the storm um, towards the end of the draft. So. I was really confused because they picked it after we had the Earth Spirit. So I felt a little disrespected that uh, they would pick Storm Spirit into my Earth Spirit. But I hope you guys learned something. I know I'm not, you know, fantastic at this by any means. But I hope you guys got something out of it. Um, and, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this commentary. And I will see you guys next time. Peace.